Sky News Centre at 7. A 25-year-old man's been arrested after a woman was beheaded in North London. Firearms officers were called to Edmonton around lunchtime where they found the victim collapsed in a garden. She died at the scene. Police Commander Simon Letchford says several homes in the area had to be evacuated. What we do know is that this male has gone along a number of the back gardens uh, of these premises. Um, officers who, who attended the scene have evacuated a number of those people from those premises to make them safe uh, and during that period they distracted the man from carrying out any further attacks. Police say they won't speculate on a motive but they don't believe it was terrorist related these men say the streets normally a safe place to live i would never expect anything like this to happen on this road or in this area normally it's a quiet road where like, nothing really happens everyone's friendly but it's just shocking Further sanctions against Russia are expected to be announced by the EU tomorrow. The US is also understood to be preparing more restrictions as the conflict in Ukraine continues. It comes after David Cameron, Barack Obama and other senior NATO leaders held talks with the Ukrainian president at the NATO summit in South Wales. Police have started a murder investigation after a woman was found stabbed in the New Forest. 47-year-old Penny Davis was discovered by her husband in Bewley on Tuesday. World boxing champion Kel Brook is in a stable condition in hospital in Tenerife after being stabbed in the leg. No arrests have been made. It's the second time he's been stabbed after being attacked in Sheffield seven years ago. The European Central Bank has unexpectedly cut interest rates to a record low. It's an attempt to stop economic stagnation against the eurozone, but has caused the pound to soar against the euro. Well, earlier, the Bank of England decided to keep the base rate of interest on hold at half a percent. And for a third year in a row, Modern Family star Sofia Vergara has been named the highest paid actress on television. That's according to Forbes. The star raked in $37 million over the last year. That's more than £22 million. And that's the latest. I'm Glenn Moore. This is WFM 97.2. Hi, I'm Amir Khan, the future world champion and British champion. When I'm in Manchester, I always tune in to WFM 97.2. I'm going to knock that off straight away because I don't need it. Because I've got a different sort of show tonight, I've got a guest. Hello, Ben. Hello, Sandra. You all right? I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, how are good, you? Good, good, good. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine now. I've, got, I've worked it all properly. And so I'm bamboozing my head off. <laughs> I, I can now, I can honestly say now that I can work the desk and I can patch a, a phone through to the desk. So I'm made up with that. You're right, welcome. so you're, um, would you call yourself a ufologist? Um, yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, I suppose so. I mean, a ufologist, is, there's no qualifications you need to be a ufologist as such. It's just someone who has an interest and has, I think, done some act, active, uh, taken some active steps to investigate mm. the phenomenon known as unidentified flying objects, which is um, a very, very widespread and very real phenomenon in the world today, in almost virtually everywhere in the world. Tell me how it all started for you. Right, well, um, that's a long story. Well, <laughs> we've got an hour. All right, OK, that's good. It'll need many longer. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I've... My interest in UFOs specific, specifically, I think, goes back um, a long way. I mean, everybody, I think, when I was a kid, had some contact with the phenomenon because of uh, films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind mm. and um, The X-Files and programs like that that were mm. very, very popular. Um, I think I, even though people enjoyed these, I think I took it more seriously than many of the others, uh, and many other people that I knew. And um, I started reading books about it, and there's... Um, one author in particular I would recommend is Timothy Good. Oh, it's amazing! Uh, he's a prolific yeah. author. Goes, he's been doing this. He's now quite old, and he's been yeah. doing this all his life. And he um, sort of contemporary with one of some of the earliest investigators into these subjects. And he's written, I think, over thirty books now. It's incredible yeah. what he's done. And it's great that he's really he's a violin player. <laughs> you know? Yes, he is. He's also a professional musician. Plays violin in an orchestra. Yeah. And I think reading his books. I think really <clears throat> brought it home quite a, a lot, you know. <clears throat> I also started, what, you know, when, when I got my computer, I got on the internet and I started watching videos by people like Stanton Friedman. Oh, brilliant. You know, he, was, he was an excellent, uh, in, excellent individual and mm. um, several other people. And I started going to conferences and things like that. Um, where, uh, are, are you going to that one? Um, the, the next one is Rendlesham Forest? That's right. On the 20th of this month, there's a, there's, there's a very 
very good conference coming up in um, in um, w- Woodbridge in Suffolk, which is all about a particular UFO event. It's centred on one of the, I think, most spectacular UFO events that have ever happened, and that is the Rendlesham Forest incident, yeah. where a an object actually came down to the ground um, and was observed by a number of uh, US Air Force security police personnel from the local air base. Yeah. So that's that. I'm looking forward to that. So that's the one that's on the 20th of September? Yeah. Um, yeah there's yeah. another one, actually, the following weekend, which is the Leeds Exopolitics Expo, if, if, uh, if I can put in a shameless plug, because I'm going to be the host of that one. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Well, the 26th uh, to the 28th of, of September at, in Leeds. And um, that, that looks good as well. What, is on the 26th? I hope so, because I'm going to be the one presenting it. Oh, well, I'm I'm going to that one on the twentieth. I, I bought my ticket yesterday. Oh great! I'll see you there. Oh brilliant, brilliant! So you're going great. Yeah, it's the first one I've been to. It'd be me, uh, my very first one, my very first UFO gig. You know what I mean? So oh well, you'll never, you'll never forget it. You really won't. I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's 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 good. You, there's going to be some brilliant speakers, then, including, including a guy called John Burroughs, who's one of the witnesses. Another man called Larry Warren, who um, oh, yeah. was uh, not only one of the principal witnesses, but he's the man who actually um, <coughs> blew the whistle and got it out into the media. Because so, if it hadn't been for him, it's possible that we may still not know about it. I mean, yeah. and well, Gary Heseltine knows a, a lot about that. Yeah, um, Gary Hazeltine will be uh, there as well. He'll be speaking. And a brilliant man called John... Bu- um, no, sorry, I mentioned John Burroughs, the, one of the witnesses, a, a very, very brave guy who's spoken out. Um, also, uh, Richard Dolan, who is a UFO historian mm-hmm. and um, yeah. a political activist, he's yeah. going to be speaking as well. He's a very interesting chap, well, come all the way from America. As soon as I saw his name, it's like, oh, I can't miss that one. I can't miss Richard oh, Dolan. Oh, no, that be good, yeah. yeah. So, th- tell me about the Tavistock Institute. Oh, the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations is an organisation that was set up um, j- just about 90-odd years ago. <coughs> and um, it was basically set up to act as a, a think tank, a sort of contractor to various governments, corporations, or any other organisations who want to use somebody, who want to use somebody to um, get what they want through psychology. In other words, to it's a form of um, psychological warfare. I mean, it's no exaggeration to say that if you're using, if you're using the human mind, if you want to affect the human mind for some sort of ends, um, it is a form of psychological warfare. And this is the, what the Tavistock Institute is. It's a um, very sinister organisation, actually, and it's behind a lot of what you see in the media. Hmm. In terms of, um, if you you know, if you, you get sort of like um, strange, you get things in the media, like you, if you watch the news or something else, you think, well, that's odd. Why have they put that in there? Yeah. You think you think it's intended to influence the viewer in some way, yeah. to to change the way they think or feel. That's very often organisations like the Tavistock Institute are behind it. Right. It's them that come up with it in the first place. Yeah. It's. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's the Tavistock Institute. Uh, it's uh, they're based in London, um, and uh, it's a little, uh, yeah, for something it's, it's got a very sinister ring to it in my ears, certainly. Well, do, do, who is the evil woman that, when you was a kid or something? Oh comes yeah. To your house? yeah. Oh yeah, I was telling you about. Yeah, I um, yes, yeah, so I, I mentioned this to Kerry at the at the, the, the last right, yeah. yeah. Um, when I was a when I was a, a child. Um, I had, um, well, my parents were like, um, I, was, I suppose, I suppose in, in the conventional kind of hierarchy of the world, they weren't special people as such, mm-hmm. um, but my, my mum was a cinema usherette. She decided to, to go to university to get an education, mm-hmm. and um, she studied psychology at university, and she ended up going to a place called Rugby, where there's a, tr- where there's a training school for um, people to train as counsellors. And while she was there training, and she she, she got her qualified as a counsellor, and she worked as a counsellor for the rest of her life. Mm. But she 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 met up with this this old lady, um, started hanging around with her, mm. and um, this old lady sort of latched onto her, and she was sort of like became my mum's best friend. She almost kind of adopted my mother in a way, and she was around our house what almost every name? day. What was her name? And, and she's kind of um, what was her name? Um, Isabel Menzies Live. Okay. Uh, yeah, this it's, it's, is quite sinister because I, um, she was very, very um, emotionally abusive towards me, extremely. And it was only many, many years later that I discovered exactly who this old lady was. And she's actually somebody who is infamous in anyone who studied psychological warfare. If you read Dr. John Coleman's book on the subject and things like that. Um, 
Her name's Isabel Menzies Light, and she's one of the founders of the Tavistock Institute. Oh, right. Uh, what she, what, I, don't, I don't know what she was doing, you know, involved in our family, quite frankly. It's just a, it's a mystery to me. And, I mean, my mum my mother, my died in 2006. Um, mm. I can't... My dad's not the sort of person I can talk to about this sort of subject, you know? Did you never ask your mum? No, I never, I never asked what was going on with this old lady. Oh, strange. Maybe I should have done. Mm. I, d I don't know what she was doing, and like I said, it's, yeah. it seems strange that she was involved in my family. I don't know why. And what was that you were saying about the moon landings? Yeah, um, I came across... Uh, this was sort of like, when I was getting into UFOs, I, I started studying a lot of other sort of strange, what you might call strange subjects. Um, for instance, the paranormal. I got interested in the paranormal and in government cover-ups, and I came across a... Um, a book which suggested that the moon landings, the Apollo missions to the moon um, in between 1969 and 1972 mm -hmm. might have been faked. They might have actually, they, it could have been that they, they never actually really flew rockets to the moon mm -hmm. and the the TV footage and the photographs you see were done in a film studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got, I started reading that as well. I sort of got involved, I, I got interested in all these different kinds of subjects, basically paranormal, UFOs, government cover-ups, things like that. Right. So, um, uh, why why have I written Steve Bassett? Oh, Stephen Bassett is mm. a an activist in the world of exit politics. He's um, campaigning for disclosure of uh, UFO uh, UFOs and um, but you see what, he's, what what it says is that the government actually know more than they're saying about UFOs. Yes, they, do. they actually know about uh, that they've actually got information. For instance. Um, well, I mean, the, the theories are quite incredible. I mean, they go everything from um, close encounters that have not been reported to actual crashes of these objects on the ground. These, yeah. these craft, wherever they're from, sometimes come to grief on the Earth's surface. And when that happens, they are secretly salvaged by the government. And the government take the wreckage to um, secure military bases where mm. they keep it from the public information. Not only that, but sometimes there's rumoured creatures that are inside them. And Stephen Bassett is one of the people who is actually campaigning to get the government to release this information to uh, to the media so that we all know about it. I remember watching one video and the uh, American um, army fella saying, yeah, this craft landed, and or, or it might have crashed even, and he said, oh, four, four feeling good guys got out. That's Bill Uhouse. Ah, you know. so you know. Yeah. yeah. He's an interesting chap. I mean, he's one of many people, Bill Uhouse, uh, who have actually said um, that they were involved in this. I mean, there's been a, an event recently called the um, called the Citizen Hearing on, yeah. on ET Disclosure, which took place in Washington, D.C., at the, the National Press Club, mm. in which a group of people from... a group of former congressmen in the uh, elected officials well, from the United Canadian States... Well, there's a Canadian bloke as well, wasn't it? A uh, Canadian minister? Yeah, and the, the Right Honourable Paul Hellier yeah. MP, who is Minister of Defence for Canada, who's certainly not, um, he's not your average ufologist, he's not your no. average sort of guy, he's a, he's a Minister of Defence, like I said, for Canada. He said that they were, they were as real as the aircraft that fly above our heads. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's a very, very, I mean, he's got nothing to gain from speaking out. He's 90 years old. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like, for, he's not bothered where it's like, see me off, I'm not asking. <laughs> oh, I should have said that. He's not bothered. He's not bothered. He's like, come and kill me. Uh, yeah. He doesn't care. Well, I mean, he's, he's in the sort of position, I think, where he could, I mean, like I said, very often, he, of course, <coughs> he doesn't have long to live in, in his yeah. sense, you know, yeah. but, but I suppose he, he, his legacy now is going to be, in, in many people's eyes, is going to be, what a nutter. See, yeah, but he doesn't care. Yeah. I mean, he's, there's some people who value their reputation too much, but he yeah. he values the truth. He wants to speak out about the truth. Is that annoying? Like that as one of the um, astronauts? Is that one that kept his gob shut? Oh, there's um, there's several. I mean, there's Dr. Ed Mitchell, who is the uh, who's one of the Apollo astronauts. Who whether you whether he went to the moon or not? I mean, he's a, he's a guy who I've got a lot of respect for. He's a he's a guy who's again is um, a very oh, he's, he's public figure. The other one. Um, an astronaut. The, the astronaut, dead famous astronaut, but he didn't say diddly squat. Buzz Aldrin? Was it Buzz Aldrin? He one of the Apollo guys. I know one of the Apollo guys said, oh, he was on the ridge waiting for us. He was all lined up waiting for us. That was Neil Armstrong. Right. Apparently he said that he, I mean, obviously it depends on what your views are about whether the, whether the moon landings were real, but... If, if they were real, then according to um, some people, he actually said that, and that these, um... 
and he's I think it was was it Armstrong? And there's that many of them in there and I watched yeah. that like you, you know, you watch that much stuff that it all sort of merges together, doesn't it? It's like <laughs> one big film. Um, there's a lot out there, and unfortunately, unfortunately, there's a lot of nonsense as well. Yeah, you've got to, so you've got to work it out yourself. You've got to look. You've got to be know what a good story is and what a bad yeah. story is. Check check what the, where the information's coming from. Check yeah. uh, the source the source information stuff like that because there's some crazy stuff. Some of it sounds crazy and is yeah. crazy, but other it well, sounds th th crazy th th and is th not. Th this is what I think, right? And I think that they're not telling us about UFOs because. The next question after everyone gets over it is, well, okay, UFOs exist, blah de blah Because um, having aliens, it's like just having someone next door, you know, they're just on another planet, it's no big deal. But the, um, the, next, quest, the next thing that you're going to say to them is, how are they flying the, the, the spacecraft, you know? Well, I mean, it's... Well, 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 if what these things are, whether they are actually flying from another planet, or the question is whether or they coming from other world beyond our own, but beyond our universe, in a sense, they, they may be interdimensional. I, I, I think there's, there's something in, in our own solar system. I think there's a few in our own solar system. Oh, well, they've been seen. All, they've been seen in low Earth orbit. I mean, they seem to be everywhere. Yeah. I mean, they've been seen. Yeah. See, they're called unidentified flying objects. Yet they've been seen in space by yeah. spacecraft. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of astronauts. I say some of the astronauts. I mean, there's a guy called Gordon Cooper who you might be referring oh, to. Yeah. He spoke. He's an astro He's an uh, American astronaut who's spoken out. There's Russians, a lot of Russians, like um, oh, Valery Yuvarov, who's yeah. a Russian astronaut. Yeah. Well, he's not a Russian, he's not an astronaut, but he's worked on the space program yeah. in the Soviet Union. There's he's a Chinese fellow as well. Chinese, uh, Chinese-American. Yeah, oh, there's, ch there's yeah. Uh, the ch China now is a major space-going nation, which has sent men into space. They're, they're going to have these experiences. What's more, they're not only in space, but they've been, under, they've, been seen, they've been seen coming in and out of the sea. Yeah. There's a guy called Bill Cooper. Yeah. Who yeah. saw... Uh, an object, a huge object, hundreds of feet across, come out of the ocean. Mm. Yeah. So th they seem to be everywhere. I mean, wherever you go, so they're in our solar system. Certainly, whether yeah. they, whether they come from a, another planet in our solar system or not, they're certainly present in our solar system, in our, on our planet, in our oceans, mm. and in our atmosphere. So uh, what are they? They land on the ground, yeah. um, and uh, some, and then they contain these biological creatures as well. I mean, a lot of these biological entities have been seen associated with them, either coming out of them or getting into them. What, what do, do you think that the Draconians, do, do, do they do live here, underground? I beg your pardon? The Draconians, what do you make of the Draconians? Oh, the, um, the like reptiles, reptilians. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, there's a very, um, there's no doubt there's a lot underneath our feet yeah. that we don't know about. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, there's, un, and there's caves that are undiscovered, in fact, they keep appearing every so often. I mean, that big sinkhole that opened up in yeah. in uh, the Pennines. That that apparently was caused by an, an unknown abandoned uh, lead mine oh. um, underneath it, which caught the and it caved in. Um, but I mean, there's all kinds of unusual caves. I mean, there's there's cave systems under Oxford that no one's explored. Even there's one leading. And that's where you are now. Isn't I'm it? in Oxford, Oxford. Yeah, there's one leading from a, um, a, a a cellar of a pub I know. And no one knows where it goes. It's not safe to explore, but it, it, it's it, these caves go everywhere. Now, some people who explore underground. Um, they've actually discovered. They come back reporting strange creatures, seeing strange unknown beings. Mm. And one of those is a reptile-like creature. And some of these can be quite hostile. And mm. there's a man called uh, Phil Schneider. Oh, who, amazing! Who, yeah. Yeah, he was. Um, he was involved in a in a battle with one oh, of them. Got badly injured. Crazy! Crazy! Lost his fingers and everything. Yeah. Do, do, what, do, I, I found myself watching um, Alex Collier again the other night the, at the ranch, the, mm, the um, yeah. video at the ranch. I love that because when he made that, it was way back in the early 90s uh, that was filmed. And um, he was full of it then and he was so angry and, you know, he was mad for it. Uh, but the, you know, the, over the years and everything that's happened to him, it's awful. Um, yeah, I mean, he's an amazing yeah. chap. There's, um, it's, 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 these, what, it's, what I realise is with people, people who doubt this really need to understand that yeah. there's these witnesses who speak mm. out have absolutely nothing to gain. They don't make a penny out of speaking out. They lose a lot of their credibility. It can, in some cases, it's a major financial blow in terms of um, losing pensions and things like that, which almost happened to Gary Heseltine, who's, who's gonna, who was a policeman. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, you know, they some, some of them, they really... I mean, there was a press conference in 2001 um, organised at the National Press Club, just where the um, where the citizen hearing was last year, where um, 
dozens of these guys came forward, including um, a lady called Donna Hare, who had worked for the CIA, yeah. who worked for NASA, and she said she'd taken, she'd seen photographs of structures, artificial structures on the moon. Mm. There was a, a guy called, um, uh, there was a guy called Captain Robert Salas, who was mm. a man whose psychological health was very carefully monitored indeed, because he was used to man an underground bunker where, where nuclear missiles were launched. Mm. And he was the one who had his finger on the button, basically. Mm. Um, so his, he was, they, you know, any sign of instability on his part, and he'd be, he'd lose his job. Uh, but he Price says he saw UFO. Well, he didn't see them, but he reports UFOs at the base where he was uh, serving. Mm. Um, so these are these are very top level people. Um, there's air traffic controllers, intelligence officers, astronauts, pilots. Yeah. You know, this, these these aren't. I mean, to use the derog- if you if you want to make put up a derogatory st- straw man of a kind of like uh, a guy with an anorak standing on a hillside. These are not those type of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Bob Dean. I, I love uh, watching Bob Dean. Oh, he's an amazing chap. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw I saw one of these things um, a couple of weeks ago uh, on a hillside. I was I went sky watching with a man who's very very proficient in and very very um, experienced in going trying to spot these on at night. And I saw some objects. And he's he's very level headed. I mean, he keeps he knows he has a special app on his phone to tell him where all the aircraft are and things like that. And uh, he knows where all the air bases are, where sort of flares might be put up. So, I mean, if he sees something, he, he knows, he can identify yeah. whether or not it's extraterrestrial or mm. whether it's something normal. And um, we saw s- some really, really strange things all around us from all points of the compass. Very quite amazing, what we saw. Because uh, I live right on top of an airport. Uh, so, and, and you learn the, the flight paths and stuff, you know, and then you know, you know, you, you see loads of things in the sky, and I can, you know, nine times I think, oh, it's a plane, it's a plane, it's a plane. Well, a couple of times, um, no, they, they haven't been planes. I'm sorry, a couple mm. of times I've seen really weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't, didn't freak me out. It's just like, oh, yeah, I know you're there. Let me go and watch Coronation Street. Because <laughs> um, I, I know they exist. They don't have to come and tell me and say, I oh, we're there. We're, we're not, you know, we're real. And I, no, no, you're okay. Go on, go to the shop. Well, you know, you don't have to come and tell me that you exist. You know, so that, I'm fine. So <laughs> what about um, MC Kesh? Oh, right. He's uh, a guy from Iran mm. who... Um, Keshe, he's actually a man who has invented, I haven't got the details to hand, but um, I know he's invented some kind of machine which um, produces energy. It's, uh, you can use it to power um, a car or a house or something like that. And it doesn't require any fuel. Yeah. Well, they just, on, on Facebook just yesterday there was a, an Indian fellow and he took this fan, just an ordinary fan apart, and then um, he got four magnets put them out of a, a motherboard, out of a computer, and uh, put them on it, and it started, it started going round. There was no power going to this thing, you know what I mean, apart from these four magnets that he put yeah. on it, and it worked. It's really quite incredible. Um, what and easy things. and simple, isn't it simple? It's that simple, you think, that's, well, I, I knew already, but it, a load more people shouldn't realise now that's how the Egyptians worked it, you know what I mean? Like yeah. The Egyptians used um, free energy. This is interesting, yeah, because the, um, this it ties in with UFOs, and it, it ties yeah. in with things like the pyramids, because, yeah, um... Yeah, just writing that word down, yeah. Um, there's a, have you heard of Coral Castle? Yeah, oh, it's amazing! Mm, this is a Lee structure Lee. made out of, of rock, in a, it's a stone building in Florida, it's extremely yeah. sturdy and well put together, in fact it was about the only, um, it was the only building in, um, that's in Florida that that's, uh, wasn't damaged by Hurricane Andrew in 1997, mm. um, and people actually took shelter in there when the hurricane was going on. Uh, it was built um, around in the 1920s by a guy called Edward Leed Skelman, yeah. and um, he built it single-handed, and no yeah. one can work out exactly how mm-hmm. he did it. He worked well, they had night, a spine no on him, didn't they? Mm, but he had, a, he had books in his library on ancient Egypt, and he had several, he built several machines, which he said the, the, the pyramid builders used. Well, he said that, yeah, yeah. So, um, that made me sort of, like, think, you know, this, it, it ties in with what you were saying, that maybe the, um, maybe, you know, maybe the, the, the builders of the pyramids, the ancient Egyptians, had discovered this technology. And, th- and the fact is, people are inventing it still, people like Nikola Tesla, who was a, a great inventor from, oh, um, amazing. late 19th century, yeah. early 20th century, 
Um, his work, this is an important point to I realise. I get so angry when I say Tesla and people go, ooh. Yeah, oh. he, he deserves to be yeah. one of the most famous men who yeah, ever lived. he should be. But, I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is, um, that, that this is important what people have to realise, is that this technology exists, yet it is not, we're not allowed access to it, because yeah. it's very, very important from the, from the point of view of those in power over us that we don't have access to free energy. This energy that comes from nothing could basically give us all the energy we need for nothing. We have to use their fuels, fossil mm. fuels, mm. which this we have to pay for, and they, actually, the they control the supply. Mm. Well, we've got all this free energy coming out of the earth all the time, it doesn't stop, you know what I mean, and it's always there, and we could all have it, and we could have all had it since Tesla wanted to give it us in what year? 1900s or something? Well, it was, well he, he started working on it around, around 18, in the 1880s. Mm. And he, yeah, in, in, in around about 1900, see, what happened was, in 19, sorry, in 1897, um, Henry Ford started mm. building the first mass-produced cars. And, um, and these were basically the first cars that were put, put on, came out of production lines, and so they were cheap enough for ordinary people to buy. Mm. And um, he, he, Tesla said he wanted to have electric-powered cars and he would he would basically put use his technology with Henry Ford to uh, to build these these uh, cars. However, um, so Henry Ford was going to make the electric cars, but then um, the the power brokers like the the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and these elite uh, bloodlines and elite um, government institutions got involved, and J P Morgan mm. and people like that, and they basically got they got Henry Ford built. Said, no, Henry, you've got to build petrol petrol engine cars not electric ones mm -hmm. and so henry ford built the first petrol engine car and since then even to this day cars have had petrol engines and um even though modern cars are of course infinitely more sophisticated than the, the early ford models mm -hmm. um they, 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 these the power source is essentially the same, same. petrol mm -hmm. and um, light bulbs that's another thing that annoys me light bulbs are the same as it was a hundred years ago yeah know? i mean it's the, the truth of the matter is, we shouldn't. It's essentially almost Stone Age technology. Yeah. It's, co it's, it's combustion yeah, it's of ridiculous. it's combustion of hydrocarbons, which is basically what cavemen used to do when they used to build wood fires, um, and it's and coal fires and things like that. And and the, the fact of the matter is, though, but it's inf it's very very important political economic reasons why this te the technology free energy technology is suppressed, and it ties in with UFOs because. I mean, if things like the Roswell incident, which is one of these events I told you about when a, um, an, a, an object from a, an unidentified flying object comes to grief on the Earth's surface and is secretly salvaged by the government, if, if that actually happened, then this, this craft did not cross interstellar distances on Texaco unleaded four-star. No, no. It would have been using a very far, far more sophisticated um, propulsion system and power mm. Source. And the thing is, if, if scientists study the wreckage, it's possible they might have been able to reproduce that technology. Of course. And, and there's a lot of information coming out from, uh, from, see, from secret government whistleblowers that this is precisely what's happened. Was, and um, that... if that's the case, then this, this uh, you know, the government are sitting on it. They're not letting us have it. They're keeping it themselves for their own purposes. They're using it for their own nefarious purposes, yeah. but they wouldn't let us have it because if they... If they didn't have, if we have free energy, just think what a difference it would make. You yeah, actually have to sit incredible. back yeah. and think about the changes it would make. I mean, yeah. you could put a little box in your car yeah. that the size of a book. It, it, it would drive you could drive your car around the world for no petrol, just yeah. stopping for oil and things yeah. like that, and to no, eat. But no gas bills, no electricity. No, your bills, house. No you could fuel your house yeah. for for nothing. I mean, there's no yeah. more pe old people dying of cold in the winter, yeah. and that's just the yeah. start of it. Yeah. No more bills, and what's more. There'd be no need. There'd be no environmental destruction so caused by. So it makes you why? Just why not give it us? Well, we all know control. about it now. We well, I'll tell you why, because scarcity, it's, it's, scarcity makes us dependent on our, on the authorities. Scarcity We're going to get it in the end. Equal. We're going to get it. We are going to get free energy. Uh, well, one I mean, that I think, I believe, uh, and I've noticed this, with, you see this with Jimmy Savile and with the Hillsborough disaster and things like that, they can't keep secrets as yeah. easy as they used to. Yeah. In 50 years! 50 yeah, they, years! Well, they've, 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 things that would have been easily suppressed a few years ago, and yeah. now they're finding them slipping from their fingers. And it's yeah. only a matter of time, I mean, it's only a matter of time before it comes out. Little knobheads like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well, who am I? And yet I, I have the power to do this with you, to tell everybody, hey, do you know what, mate? There's free energy out there, and you can have it. It's just the government won't let you. Yeah, I mean, just think, I mean, just think, but if, if you ever hear them talk about environmental destruction, about forests being cut down, mm. about uh, pollution and things like that, that free energy is safe, it's clean, 
It's yeah. infinite, and yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't have any of that. You wouldn't have all these power stations belching out soot. Um, you know, you wouldn't have people starving to death because I mean, yeah. look, a lot of a lot of the problems, the reason why there's so many poor people in this world, people who've got no food or water, is because they because of these this economic stranglehold yeah. that the uh, the authorities have over us. Yeah. And with with free energy declassified, there'd be no poverty. There'd be enough for everybody. We, you you desalinate seawater and drink that. You could put it on your farmland. You grow farm. You make the deserts bloom. Um, you know, it's it's just and with things like anti gravity. I mean, you wouldn't even need roads. You could have you could have fly, you could have aircraft. That, yeah. You know, cars which fly. Wow. I mean, it's just this is the world we could live in. Yeah. And, and one day we will. Brilliant. One day we will. Well, we will. We will. We definitely will. Because I want you to tell me now about what Mary Rodwell was saying. Mm, Mary Rodwell is a very interesting lady from Australia. Mm. And she, um... Well, actually, she's a, York, she's a Yorkshire woman, isn't she? Oh, originally, yeah. yes. She, she, she's, from, she's from Yorkshire originally, but she, um, she moved to Australia and lives in Perth, Western Australia. Um, and, um, she is, she's discovered that certain children have been reporting encounters with strange beings. And, um, Mary has been sort of working with these children. She's trained as a counsellor. Mm. And she's been working with these children to bring these memories to the surface. Um, the quick strange beings which the kids could not have known about from TV and um, children talk about them very fondly a lot of these, these beings are very very uh, positive and, they're very, and they uh, give the children a lot of inspiration they, ha they have a kind of spiritual message um, and Mary has theorised that um, the, these beings are actually involved in the next generation of humans and, and um, into sort of like um, almost uh, create a new kind of person a yeah. person more um, a person who's more spiritual, yeah. more in tune with nature, and, and all these other sort of cliches almost. But, yeah. but I think it's yeah. a very, very good thing that this is happening. Yeah, these would, the little bit that I watched of it was uh, brilliant, the things she was saying. Mm -hmm. These little kids are saying to her, not I'll learn more on the ships than I do off the teacher. Yeah, it's like amazing. That. Where do the kids... She, Mary says these kids, she, she knows when a child is making stuff up. She's trying to know this. Yeah. And she says these kids are not making this stuff up. It's real. Yeah. And a lot of the parents, you know, got, they, they're brought into this very reluctantly. They start off thinking, well, is there something wrong with my child? Sometimes they take the child to a, a doctor, and the, and the doctor refers them to a child psychologist. But then, very often, very reluctantly, the parents have to be, because they know their child so well, they, they reluctantly have to accept that what's happening is real. There's a, a lady called Anne Andrews, actually. She's a, she's a good friend of mine, actually. Her son um, has had these experiences, and she has had them, too. They almost like, they run in her family. Mm. And it's really quite remarkable, the story she tells. And it's, it's, she's, uh, she's worked with Mary and um, other people like that. Well, the, the, t tell me about Anne Andrews' story. Um, Anne Andrews is a lady who lived, um, who lives uh, with her husband in a, in a house in the country. She's got two sons, and one of them, um, ever since he was born, he has st strange things, strange phenomena have uh, surrounded him. And her, too. I mean, it turns out later on that um, she herself started having these experiences, too. And, uh, I've been to visit her, actually, and, um, strange thing, I've, I've seen some of these mysterious phenomena myself, including noises appearing out of thin air, you know, um, lights switching on and off by themselves, <sighs> and, uh, Jason is one of these people that Mary talks about, one of these children, although he's grown up now, he's, um, he's in his twenties, he's, mm. uh, uh, but he's one of these, these children, one of these people. Is it, um, what does she call him? Uh, Indigo, Indigo kids. Yeah. It, it uses terms like indigo child and um, homo noeticus yeah. um, and things like that to refer to these particular kinds of people and the experience they have. Um, as I've got a good friend, Ellis Taylor, actually. He, he's um, a good friend of mine in Oxford. He's had constant experiences like this. I've, I've been around him when these things have happened. I've, uh, lots of strange things follow him around. And um, it's, he's, an, he's another one. I mean, it's, it's more common <coughs> than than most people might realise. In fact, it's, it's possible that somebody listening to this programme is quite likely, actually, has had some experience like this, but just not, has not talked about it. Yeah. Because <coughs> there's no... If you go and tell your GP, he'll send you, he'll, he'll, he'll send you to a psychiatrist. Yeah. You'll be on Prozac before you know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who, else, who else do you talk to? I mean, family and friends will probably just laugh at you. Yeah. Um, so Mary's trying to break through that. Mary's, and people like her, is trying to... Uh, you know, break through that kind of attitude and, and create a new kind of a new kind of paradigm in which people who have these experiences are accepted and listened to and understood. Yeah, it's just 
because the first thing it's still you know you, you get people that all these don't exist and then you get there's no evidence you go oh please no there's evidence. tons of evidence well i mean what it's, it's you, you want to ask these people i mean if if the kind of evidence we got so far doesn't convince them and i don't think anything will just uh, just the implants yeah, just I mean, there's, there's scans wow. of people with imp. These are these objects, artificial objects that are placed inside people's bodies. They've been picked up on scans. They've been removed through surgery and they've been examined, and no one can work out where they come from or what they are. I witness testimony of the highest calibre. Mm. I mean, if this was a court case, it would be open and shut. Yeah. And I mean, this is the point of the citizen hearing. And Stephen Bassett is now pushing for a full-scale, proper U.S. congressional hearing. Oh, He's God. done the citizen one, which is former members of Congress. He wants a proper congressional investigation now. And he's also going to the United Nations to try and push for a similar thing to the citizens' hearing involving the United Nations. Would you trust the UN? Um, no, quite frankly. Neither mm, uh, would I. Uh, but I think um, Stevens. I still think what Stevens doing is still valid. Oh yeah, of course it is. You know, I think um, he doesn't quite. That, you know. I think he's, he he may uh, not quite understand all the, the you know the deeper core conspiracy level of things. But mm. I think what he's doing can do an awful lot of good, and I'm fully behind him. All oh, right. So tell me, we've got oh, we've got a few minutes yet. Yeah? What do you make of? Uh, I know this has gone a bit off subject, um, but I am so fed up to the back teeth of reading and watching daft stuff about this group called ISIS. ISIS, yeah. Oddly enough, ISIS is the name of, uh, in Oxford, we call the River Thames. Yeah. Those through Oxford, we call it the ISIS. Oh, and yeah. ISIS is a, this is where uh, it's a, um, a goddess from ancient Egypt, is the kind of mother yeah, goddess of the ancient... Yeah, it's about New World Order. Yeah, word. so <laughs> it's something Masonic, it maybe it's, they got it from, you know, Freemasonry and yeah. um, organisations, occult organisations uh, often use sort of terminology like that. But mm. ISIS actually is a, um, a group which is driving around, uh, supposedly it's, it's called a, um, it's in the news, a radical Muslim group, um, and um, it's been going around Iraq and Syria cutting the heads off people mm -hmm. who don't support them, like moderate Muslims, mm -hmm. Christians, um, the Yazidis, which is a local pagan religion, and people like that. And they've also supposedly killed two war correspondents, one oh, couple, yeah. two weeks ago and another mm -hmm. one yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, they're driving around in these brand new Toyota pickup trucks. you can't watch the video because you'll get locked up. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't want to watch something like that anyway, but apparently, I mean, even, even the Daily Telegraph is saying this now, there's reason to think that the, the murder of uh, Mr. Foley, James Foley, like, two weeks ago, the that hoax. was actually fake. Yeah, um, the mean. I think it's, if, if so, I think his family have a right to know. Um, uh, but uh, no one's... That's, it, this news story seems to sort of come and go, although uh, people I know would not and not letting it go, and we're wondering what the hell's going on. ISIS itself, they drive around in these brand new Toyota yeah. pickup trucks, yeah. and where they got them from, I don't know. Maybe they've got a contract with Toyota. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. what they are, actually, is they're an organisation that was... Paid for by us and America. Unfortunately, a lot of it comes from British and American taxpayer, because um, they're actually trained and funded by the CIA as a uh, CIA contractor. There's several different sources for this. One of them is a CIA contractor called um, J uh, Stephen Kelly, and he says that it's a fabricated enemy created by the United States, yeah. which, of course, um, this is the point. I mean, they've been doing this since the Cold War, but cr creating these radical Muslim groups. Yeah, that Al-Qaeda? That was yeah. the one. Well, Al-Qaeda was actually an operation, was actually the Arabic word for the database. Data? Yeah. Oh, and it was please. actually an operation. It was, it was actually an operation started in the 1980s during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan mm -hmm. to fund radical... Um, Muslim groups, the Muhajin, Muhajin, yeah. whatever they're called. Yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce their names now. Uh, but uh, they were basically a radical Muslim group in Afghanistan, yeah. which included Osama bin Laden, who uh, were fighting back against the Soviets. These are these are brutal individuals. I mean, if they caught a, a Russian soldier alive, they'd feed him alive to vultures. That's the kind of people they are. Mm. Uh, and um, they, were, they would do things like they believed in Sharia law, which included... Um, you know, um, cutting hands off, mm -hmm. beheading, treating women as slaves, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, so the Muhajin became the Taliban. And yeah. um, and there's the, the same philosophy, actually, was in the government of Saudi Arabia, which is a great ally and trading partner of the West, mm -hmm. which is a brutal, brutal regime. Well, um, and but does, doesn't one of them own uh, Fox News? I think so, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, they've... they've Absolutely, Cones, side by side, despite the despite the cruelty of that regime, 
they're absolutely they're absolutely in bed with uh, no, they, don't make no mistake i mean these these organizations whether it's in they seem to be popping up everywhere these radical muslim groups don't they in you kenya in uh, west africa all over the middle east and they they are funded and trained by western intelligence agencies and um not only that, I mean, it also serves to create divisions here at home because, I mean, as soon as you hear these stories... Uh, I mean, uh, do you remember that Coney? Uh, Coney, it was about a year ago or something, and, and there was a video, and there was sort of this guy in Africa that was rounding up all these children and stealing them and making them yeah. into soldiers. And, it, and oh, 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 yeah, on Coney, that yeah. video, Obama sent troops in and this, that and the other, and it turned out that the video was all a load of nonsense. Yeah. And oh. we've heard now there's 200 schoolgirls got kidnapped, didn't they, in Nigeria? Yeah. And apparently they've been held as ransom. And again, it's, it's this, these groups, these organisations, are they, it's, you know, terror is fabricated, is to the yeah. most part, is, is fabricated by governments for political, for strategic agendas. And I mean, I mean, I, sh I should say, you know, there's a lot of division in our country now. I mean, because we've got, every, whenever we hear these stories about Muslims in Iraq, we look at the Muslims in our country and we think, oh, they're, they're in on it. Mm. And there's a couple of very noisy characters, actually, in the media in this country, who, again, are agents of this, of, of the government, who are putting on false beards and going, I think, well, one of them has a false beard anyway. He has, like, glue on his face. You can see where it's stuck no. on. And talking about, um, you know, sort of Sharia law, etc. Not and even the orc. Mm, this actually just justifies, this means the government now has an enemy to point fingers at. Yeah. We can now point fingers at, uh, it used to be communists, before yeah. that it was Nazis, and the Nazis yeah. had the Jews, and yeah. there's always an enemy you can point fingers at, and, and so any unpopular policy the government wants to bring in, it can set that policy up as a solution to the problem, yeah. or the or perceived problem, that they themselves have created. Yeah. Um, David Icke calls it problem, reaction, solution. So, yeah. well, we, 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 I think this country, we're trying to drag this country into a civil war. Well, yeah, I think it's... And that's because we're wary of this kind of propaganda. We really do. We have to look... Whenever we hear about these, some bad guy, some evil monster is set up in the media, we've got to look behind the, the headlines and behind the, the mainstream articles and see what, where is the connection. Because, I mean, even serial killers, I mean, a lot, it's surprising how many serial killers have links to military psychological warfare operations. Wow. And, that yeah. is, and, and things like the Sandy Hook shooting, which actually oh. was a, uh, which was a fabricated event. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was completely, no. it was basically oh, a yeah. work of fiction. Um, yeah. Same. Like 9-11 like and 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. So, yeah, 7-7 seven, seven, um, was a, another, was actually a false flag attack, which mm -hmm. was carried out by intelligence agencies. Um, I mean, all the evidence points to the, the bombs being placed underneath the trains. Um, as with 9-11, 9-11 exactly the same. Um, mm. The buildings were destroyed mm. using high-tech weaponry. Mm, scale um, scale. The, the, the people on the, you know, passion, all the things on the, to do with the planes. There's no proper passenger manifest. The evidence does not fit together yeah. that um, mm. what happened on 9-11 or 7-7 was anything other than a government false flag event. Mm. Oh, God. What... Have you heard uh, what Ka what Karen Hood is, is saying? Yes, I'm, it's very mm. interesting because she's saying that. Um, very, yeah. Yeah, she she's not only has she sort of talked about the possibility that there are of extraterrestrials and that um, they are interfering, they're involved in uh, in political processes. In mm. other words, um, this is a big subject, but some of these aliens, wherever they come from, are actually working together with our government. Yeah. But she's also said that there's a plan to ch completely alter the economic landscape of the Earth. <clears throat> By um, by basically redistributing the gold in the world, and so that what, there's going to be some kind of economic revolution where all the currencies yeah. will well, be reset. What she's saying is brilliant now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's, she, basically, what's going to happen is China is going to be the new sort of country of favour. Mm. This is this is like the, the new superpower because, and we all know America was America was a superpower in the 20th century. Before that, it was the British Empire. There's been others going back to the Roman Empire. Mm. But these, these are fronts for this global elite. Yeah. This, I call them the yeah. Illuminati, this, yeah. which is actually a network like of black magic queen. secret societies. Yeah. Um, sorry, did, did you say something? Sorry, you're a bit quiet. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'll try and say this. Like I said, like the Queen. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's rumours, there's stories going around that the Queen is actually one of these beings. She's a major. And people, have seen her. people who are psychically sensitive have seen her morph into this sort of gr green, scaly-skinned reptilian creature. And mm -hmm. I know this sounds crazy if you're new to this information. No, not so to me. I know, not you, on, uh, some people listening might think, this is crazy, this is dark, but 
please do check it out yourself yeah. before you dismiss it. Check it out. I, check I out David Icke and what he says about it. And Karen Hudis is now saying she's seen these things, and they, and, she, and she's saying that they, these they're planning to crash the economy and rebuild it into a new <laughs> form. Mm. Well, if, if anyone's watched Unlawful Killing, even in that, um, Diana says that they did things to her, you know? Exactly. Um, I, I, um, if you have an, a copy of the Unlawful Killing DVD, well, then you're breaking the law, because it is banned in this country. Well, I, Although, I do actually know the man who made it. Uh, you know, he's a very good, good friend. Um, yeah, oh, Mr. Allen, yeah. He's Keith oh, Allen. No, no, he, I, mean, yeah. I mean, the guy that produced it. Yeah. He's, he's done a hell of a lot of good. This is a really quite remarkable... Story because he basically because when Princess Diana died in 1990 it was in 1987 uh, 1997 mm -hmm. um, she was killed in this car crash but what happened then was just so strange there were so many breaches of normal normal emergency service protocol yeah. and lo and police protocol mm. and procedure that it makes it look suspiciously like she was murdered. Of course she was murdered. Course and she did. herself said that she wrote a letter to a friend Paul Burrell who's her butler and her friend and said that. Um, she might be killed in a car crash. In a car crash, yeah. And um, this is um, and what Keith Allen has done. He's made this film, which is banned in this country, which says um, you can get it. You can you get can it on get this. Because that, you know, I did. Yeah, well, there's bootleg copies online. If you download it, you're breaking the law. So, um, just a little disclaimer: don't do it. But when you've done it, please do watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically, brilliant. Yeah, um, it really is brilliant. It is. Do you know, the, the, you know when that was shown at Cannes, that got a standing ovation? Yeah, there's a it coroner's really inquest. Did. There was a coroner's inquest in which um, there was a verdict of unlawful killing. Now, when this happens at a coroner's inquest, the police normally are called. But in this case, the police were not called, and th basically the media just shut it down completely. Um, it was completely washed under the carpet. Uh, mm. But if you watch that film, it it's all, an hour and a half of yeah, absolutely yeah. open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that, at first, when she first died, I'm like, to, to the guy that produced it, oh, please, no, no, no. I just didn't want to believe it. it was, uh, they call it something, don't they? Yeah. Um, I just really didn't want to believe that it bumps her off, you know. And I really, truly wanted to believe that it was an accident. And I was like, no, no, this is just an accident. And he's like, well, okay, but... And then just went into all this evidence. And, oh, I, I, yeah. I, I couldn't say anything to him. Well, I, what could I come back with? I had nothing. Uh, and then I watched it. And flipping heck. Mm. I was, and I, and I, I wrote to him and said, sorry, I'm sorry for you, know, <laughs> uh uh, you know, and, and great, brilliant, and slap your back because you've done a great job. Yeah. You well, really you know, um, it, well, I, was, I was actually on duty at the time because I was a hospital porter, and I was on night shift the night she died. And uh, basically everyone at the work, it, was, it wasn't too busy, so everyone was sort of crowded around a TV set watching yeah. the news. And these people, these tr highly trained casualty officers, these doctors and nurses, they were saying, what, is she still in the tunnel? Haven't they moved her out yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah. And she was there some pages. strange, mad reason. Uh, I, I was working in a hospital as well the, when she died. I couldn't sleep that night, and I got up, and it's something I never did. And I got up, put the telly on, and oh, there it was. You know, the tunnel. She was in the tunnel. I was staying up till about four or five o'clock, just watching it. It was horrible. It's just, and it's just so, it's so suspicious. I mean, it was. Yeah. I mean, anyone who, I mean, we told we we got a phone call through to go and put the flag down to half mass, and. um and this no, and this came through from um, the from the Department of Health, and we went and did it, and then we came back, and then they said, "Oh no, she's dead." But it just didn't make sense. She'd not even been taken to hospital. Well, she was sort of there was so so many confused news stories yeah. because yeah. at first they said she was dead in a tunnel, yeah. and later on they said, "Oh no, yeah. they got her to hospital." But the thing is, the ambulance took ages to yeah. get there. This is in one of the biggest cities yeah. in the world, yeah. and this and. It, there's so many other suspicious factors. It's, it's like the CCTV camera's not working. Um, yeah. Henri Paul, the, the, the driver... I mean, who's what what happened to, to that, to, to the white van? To the yeah. Uno, you know? The white feet Uno, which was it, never yeah. been traced. Never caught on CCTV. It's amazing how these CCTV yeah. cameras never work when you need them. Yeah. They're yeah. there to catch your number plate if you go through a bloody oh. red light. Yeah, flipping but it, yeah. If you, if, you, if you need to catch someone, if you need to work out who killed one of the most important, one of the most famous women in the world, yeah. oh, they're not working. Oh, no, I was turned them off that night. Yeah. It's oh, ridiculous, it really is. So, how, how's it going to pan out, do you think? What's going to happen? 
I feel optimistic. I feel when I see things like all this information coming out about the Hillsborough disaster, which was a cover-up. Yeah. It was a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. And to believe that there was, it was anything other than an accident oh, and what the was, son made said. you a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. But, I mean, I've, they, they, they didn't find out that the police and the FA and the local authorities, they deliberately covered up their own um, yeah. foolishness because it was a complete, they yeah. were completely criminally negligent. Well, they wouldn't open some doors, would they? Yeah. If they would have opened some doors and people, the people could have got through, it, it wouldn't have happened. They were criminally negligent that day. Mm. They um, allowed, I mean, almost 100 people died, over a th- almost 1,000 were injured. Yeah. Um, it was a terrible, terrible disaster. And really, they should, they should have uh, gone down, they should have gone to jail for that. And some, hopefully someone will go to jail for this. 20 mm. years too late, but, um, and the same with Jimmy Savile, who, I mean, this is... this yeah, is still think there's more to come out. Oh, God, definitely. Well, I mean, it's, it, what we've seen is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, and Rolf Harris, and there's a couple of other people, there's Dave Lee Travis, who, I mean, at least he went for, for adults. But um, the, the fact of the matter is, um, there was... Um, they're desperate at the moment, the BBC, to stop people asking a very obvious question. This is that... Because so far, these people have been tr- betrayed as bad apples who, through some extraordinary oversight, mm. managed to get away with what they did, abusing mm. children on BBC premises and BBC yeah. care. In the case of Savile, this was over 50 years he was doing this. Yeah. And we're supposed to believe it was just some sort of oversight? Or is, is there, and I think it's very, very obvious, some, there was some kind of institutional collaboration going up to the highest level to allow this to, ca- to happen. Of course. And, the, and the, currently the BBC and the government are desperate to avoid that. I mean, there's stories of uh, now in Parliament, there's um, um, the MP Geoffrey Dickens who, who, who passed a dossier to the Leon Britton, who was the Home Secretary, in 1983, yeah. with the names yeah. of pe- government people who've since been proven to be paedophile files, like Cyril Smith. Yeah. And, and Margaret he, he, Thatcher he basically nothing. shut it down. She shut yeah. down that investigation. Yeah. And um, this well, is... Well, who this was that to? Wasn't it Leon Britton? Le- Leon Britton is, is, well, the funny thing is, he was then accused of uh, raping a girl in the 60s. Mm. So it's almost like they're warning him, Leon, you know, keep your mouth shut. Picture with him, with kids, the kids <coughs> on his knee. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they do a lot of, they, I mean, a lot of people who get into high positions of power and, or become celebrities are often set up in a compromising situation with underage people um, in order to, they can use it to blackmail them. Yeah. Later on, they can say, "Look, you do as you're told, or this is oh, going to come out." If he's going to Elm House, <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah, Elm House, King Cora Boys' Home in Northern Ireland, uh, the Oak de la Garenne Children's Home on Jersey. There are probably many, many others where children are suffering to this day. I know a guy called Bro- um, called Brian Clare who's currently trying to get justice for these kids. He's a survivor of, of this abuse this, of institutional child abuse in mm. in the care system. Uh, this is, and it's just un- utterly horrific, and it's going on right under our nose. And mm. it's, it's, it's organised. It's not just a few bad apples and people looking the other mm. way. It's something that is organised deliberately from the highest levels. Yeah. And when this comes out, because one day it will, Sandra, yeah. people are going to weep in the streets. Yeah. That's how bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I mean, it has to come out. I mean, I feel optimistic. I feel it's going to come out. When it, it'll, be d- it'll be difficult when it does, but it will be a yeah. lot better for it in the long yeah. run. A lot better. C- cognitive <coughs> dissonance, I think it's called. The one you don't want to believe something. Yeah. Um, well, I think a few people will have a bit of that going on. But uh, they'll still have to get over it. They'll just have to yes. get over it. We and have find to find out the Queen's a lizard. <laughs> and UFOs I mean, exist. Exactly. I mean, we've got to this, 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 this suffer this constant suffering of children and the other things we've talked about this evening has to stop. I mean, it's, it's, we've got to, people have to realise exactly why these things are happening and that's the only way you can put a stop to it. Yeah. And then we can live in a much happier world. Yeah. It would be easy. Well, when, when, we, when we get our free energy, oh, mm. that'd be amazing. Three things. It, I, I think we, we, after, when we've had free energy for ages, we can, we can get on to having a moneyless world then. Yeah. I think, anyway. I think well, that, I think with the abundance we, we, we we're looking at, yeah. it may be not necessary to, to, uh, to, to, to have money. I mean, I'm, no. I'm not a socialist. I'm not suggesting communism. I'm just saying that with the amount of abundance we have, mm. we, will, we will have... Um, it may not necessarily, it, may, it will completely transform the world yeah. economically. No, no one will care about money. Money yeah, will, will be... Well, no one will be poor, you see. Yeah. When no one's poor, yeah. money, sort of, in a sense, loses its meaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only when you don't... Ha- I know this from experience. It's only when you have a shortage of it, which, of course, most people do nowadays. Yeah. I, you, I know exactly you, what you're talking about. Right? Yeah, well, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you do. I think we all do, most yeah. of us do. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, brilliant. I've had a great gab with you, Ben. Oh, really, really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and, and like you, I'm 
optimistic mm. uh, for the future and it's only listen to people like Mary Rodwell you know yeah because um, you listen to other people and th you'll be you end up in a corner twitching you know what I mean <laughs> um, you listen to f well I'm, you know I'm not going to mention any names but they're out there spreading yeah. fear and doom and you know what I'm talking about yeah and, and th there's no point in that well, what's the point and, and I certainly I don't really want people, you know, on my show, you know, like being, oh no, the world's going to end. So I made up that, that you don't think that what the world's going to end. Mm. So thank you for that, Ben. Thank oh, you for thank coming. Oh, thank you, Sandra. On. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoyed it. Me too. Can I say hello to to my girlfriend Sue you and to my? I, I don't think my dad's listening, but uh, to all my friends and everyone else um, who uh, who know me. Yeah, well, go no. on. And what about your website? Oh, you can be found out more about me at um, Hapanwo, H P A N W O. That's Hospital Porters Against the New World Order. dot blogspot. dot com. And there's, um, you'll find there all kinds of articles and uh, the YouTube channel and the radio shows that I do. And I saw it. Um, I just remember now. I think it was with your wife, and you, you was. It, I'd always. You might be a missus or a girlfriend or whatever. But you, you was um, demonstrating somewhere. Oh right, yeah, that's that's someone else. I've got a great. That's Heidi, my, my good friend Heidi, oh. who is. Uh, uh, who's uh, yeah we were doing a um we were doing a protest outside the science museum about it. et disclosure this was it was this was a world disclosure day mm. which is every july the 8th which um, is something organized by stephen bassett's paradigm research group and we were doing this um, demonstration to try to raise awareness of the the ufo cover-up well brilliant and, and i'm glad you're on the planet ben and i'm glad you're doing what you're doing and i'm just glad that there's people like you around oh thanks Sandra. I really am. and you too thank you glad i'm glad you're doing this radio show and you're reaching all these people in Witham Shaw and everywhere else oh thank you thank you and i will see you on the on the 20th of uh, this month definitely yeah see you in woodbridge oh brilliant brilliant nice one. Oh, well, thanks thanks to um the gap Ben, You're and, welcome. Um, Thank um, you for having me on. And I've just got to try and get to the news now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Cheers, Ben. Yeah. People don't believe everything you hear in it. No, don't believe anything you read in the newspapers. Yeah. Oh, or even mainstream news is bobbins. Definitely. Bobbins. I, I watch uh, Russia Today more than anything. Well, that's funny, isn't it? Because in the Soviet times, they used to listen to Western news. Now we're trying to get the truth from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that. And Al Jazeera. And that's another. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Right, so I better go. I'm going to miss the news. All right, so thanks a lot for talking, Ben. And You're then welcome, I'll Sandra. See, I'll meet you soon. See you again soon. Okay. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, brilliant. Wasn't that brilliant? Like, oh, so we're not on the air now? N n no. Oh, <laughs> we sorry, if I, sorry if I talked over you occasionally. It's just, you're so quiet, I could hardly hear you. Oh, sorry about that, Ben. It, is, it would have been the dials on the desk that I don't oh, like right. missing with. Uh, in case I, I knock it off altogether. Oh, great. Is this going to be podcasted? This oh, program? yeah, I, I'll, I'll put it on my Spreaker. In, Brilliant. Uh, straight away. Since right, well, I I will, what I will do is I will p put a link on her panwo. Oh, lovely. So people can, people can actually hear it who missed the live show. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, so, well, cheers for that, Ben. You're and, welcome, um, And I'll, I'll see you soon. See you on the 20th. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, bye. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Oh, no. Brilliant. Brilliant. Love that. That was great. Cheers, Ben. And, um, so, come back next week. Uh, oh, next week, I've, it's just, um, Mike Sexton will be pleased to hear that uh, I'll be playing uh, Alien Sex because it's, it's just my show next week. So, do come back next week. And Hi, yourself. I'm Amir Khan, the future world champion and British champion. When I'm in Manchester, I always tune in to WFM 97.2. What a delightful tune. Could he possibly rewind and come again? Oi, you. Do you like niche? Think you can handle the beat? Control the heat? Then tune in to Wibbish RFM with me, the one and only Maz Morgan. Oi, tell you what, this radio station is going wide, worldwide. Yes! And whoever that is ringing up the studio, hold on, because I'm live on the air. It's Maz Morgan on your FM dial. Every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. It's all about the baseline show. Blake Run, where folk, blues and roots music hold the airwaves. Get yourself a drink, sit down, kick off your shoes and relax and let the music take you where it will. Blake Run, with me, Bullman, every Friday night, 10 to 11. 
Join me, Philip Sibanda, the Air Marshal Commander, every Tuesday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. for your early morning wake up breakfast show on WFM 97.2. Join me for weather and traffic updates, all your local community news, interviews, and not forgetting some great tunes to keep you entertained. Tune in to the Air Marshal Commander every Tuesday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. only on WFM 97.2. Waste, and you are listening to the Metal Show on 97.2 FM with Amanda. We are from Obey the Brave in your face. Boom.